Today's video is sponsored by Sheet Music Plus, a great website with sheet music from any genre you could possibly want. Click the link down in the description below and enter in the word love at checkout and you get $15 off your order. How about that? In the meantime, stick around. We got a great video coming for you. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene, the people that make it, including me. I'm Josh, and today we're uh, doing video number four in a series of five that are designed for new musicians looking to buy their first musical instrument. To see other videos like this, click up here. Often overlooked, but noticeable in its absence, the keyboard can be that missing element in your sound and also function as a solo instrument. With multiple sizes and features, it can be overwhelming for any musician. Let's dive into the details, shall we? If you're enjoying the content Room 6 is putting up, please make sure you subscribe down there and hit the bell so you don't miss an episode. While you're at it, feel free to like and share, and uh, yeah, let's go. Before we go further, I'd like to say that much of this information is courtesy of schoolofrock.com. Here's some things to look for. Action. Action describes how well the keys on a keyboard or piano respond when they're pushed down. Each keyboard model's action varies in firmness and resistance. Unweighted keys are easier to push down, while weighted keys respond like a traditional piano, making a keyboard with weighted keys a good piano for beginners. MIDI compatibility. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface, a common electronic instrument language that allows instruments to talk to each other by sending and receiving signals. While not a necessary feature for music keyboards for beginners, MIDI compatibility may become more important to the student if he or she gets into electronic music or chooses to interface the keyboard with a computer. Computer connectivity. Many of the best keyboard brands offer computer connectivity. Although it's not necessary to learn to play, computer connectivity is a good option for students who plan to create their own music with music composition programs. Buying a beginner keyboard with computer connectivity now may help avoid the need to upgrade the keyboard in the future. Sampler and recording capabilities. As with MIDI compatibility and computer connectivity, sampler and recording options are advised for students who want to create their own musical compositions. Storage. While an option, onboard storage isn't necessary. Students can download software patches and new keyboard sounds on micro USB cards instead. Input and output. Audio input to a keyboard or digital piano is uncommon and almost always uses MIDI when available. Keyboard output is a much more important feature as it allows the use of amps and recording equipment. Sound. Keyboard sound is one of the most important considerations when choosing a good beginner keyboard. The best keyboard brands produce sounds equivalent to those produced by a true piano. Some other considerations include polyphony which is the number of sounds a keyboard produces at any given time, and multitimbrality, the ability of the keyboard to play sounds such as drums, strings, and woodwinds as a background or complement to the tune being played. Keyboard size. A keyboard with full size and weighted piano keys is perhaps the best keyboard to learn piano for adults. Such keyboards tend to have fewer sound options, however. For students interested in electronic music, a good beginner keyboard has smaller and unweighted keys, but more sound functions. There's also something called a workstation keyboard. Some of the advantages of a workstation keyboard include being great for composition, they allow pre-programming of simultaneously played music features, so you can really layer the you know, instrumentation. They have weighted keys, they offer professional industry standards, and advanced play options. Some of the disadvantages of a workstation keyboard include they tend to be priced at the higher end of the scale. They're professional, they're professional grade. The sheer number of features can intimidate and overwhelm new students. There's also an arranger keyboard. Some of the advantages of an arranger keyboard include they conform to professional industry standards and are well suited for composition. They have an auto accompaniment 
that encourages students to play along. Some of the disadvantages of an Arranger keyboard are starting prices can be higher, <laughs> a lot higher than those of less advanced keyboards. Beginners can find the range of programmable options overwhelming. What about synthesizers? Well, the 80s called, and they're still around. Some of the advantages of a synthesizer are that it's designed for playing with other musicians. Um, they provide output to amplifiers or recording equipment. It bridges the gap between a piano and digital equipment really well. Offers multiple sound options. Some of the disadvantages of a synthesizer, there's a wide range of quality between brands. Students may outgrow the keyboard capabilities of one and can't afford another. Unweighted keys can make the transition to full piano a lot more difficult too. Let's talk digital piano. Some of the advantages are it feels like playing a traditional piano due to weighted and graded keys and produces a great piano sound and offers volume control, which is it's cheaper than a traditional piano. There's no need to tune it or replace broken parts. It's ideal for practice and solo performances. A lot of them come with headphone jacks. Some of the disadvantages of a digital piano is that these pianos have relatively few sound options. They're not portable like synthesizers, they're very heavy. The absence of full-size 8-inch jacks can make setup for playing gigs troublesome as well. There's also something called a controller keyboard. Some of the advantages are it can be used for computer composition, outputs MIDI information to synthesizers and computer software, but some of the disadvantages of a controller keyboard are it has to be plugged into a computer or laptop, and there's no onboard sounds. Uh, it's a poor choice for beginner keyboardists. You really gotta know what you're doing and mess around with it for a while. Now, the number of a keys on a keyboard affects what can be played. Most keyboards come with 66, 72, or 88 keys. For a beginner, 66 keys are sufficient for learning to play, and you can play most music on a 72 key instrument. For anyone interested in playing classical piano, however, a full 88 keys are recommended, especially if you plan on one day playing a traditional piano. Many keyboards have fewer than 66 keys. This is common for a synthesizer or a keyboard dedicated to producing electronic organ music. For instance, an analog synthesizer restricts itself to the number of keys needed to play songs in particular genres. Professional keyboards can often shift keys up or down to accommodate specific ranges. Tickling the ivories can be relaxing and exciting. As you get acquainted with your new friend, remember to try all the buttons and knobs. You never know when that weird sound or effect might come in handy later. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and you found it somewhat informational. There's some links in the description for some great beginner keyboards. There's also links down there for my Patreon page and CDs that I've put out. And also my online store, room6.shop. You want to support the channel, you want to support the local music scene, that's how you do it. One of those ways, I swear the money's going to go to either helping the channel or helping the music scene. So in the meantime, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. If you want to subscribe, you know what to do. Click down there and don't forget to ring the bell. Remember to be amazing and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Oh, and practice. <laughs>